Paris is once more in space. In Dame Isabel's cabin, where she suffers anew from space sickness, she is planning the next leg of the trip with Captain Gondar and myself. We must definitely avoid the mistakes we made on Sirius Planet. According to our itinerary, we will next visit Zaid, the second planet of Phi Orionis. I understand that the Autochthones are definitely humanoid. Is that not so, Bernard? I have not visited the world myself, but I am told the inhabitants of Zaid are not only humanoid in appearance, but also display cultural traits analogous to our own, including art forms based on a modulation of sound, which is to say, music. Zaid it is, then. I presume, Captain, that our route will not take us too far afield from Rularu. No, no difficulty there. Fire Ryan is in the general direction. But I have a suggestion. Yes? I recall mention of a planet in Hydra named Yarn, inhabited by a very musical people. It's a world which has hardly been visited by man, and I understand it. it's extremely advanced artistically. Just the place for you to take your troop board, so it seems to me. Our present itinerary, according to you, takes us towards Rlaru. Is this not correct? Yes, indeed, absolutely correct. Come to think of it, Gondar, don't you think it's about time you let us in on the location of Rlaru? Better that I keep my own counsel for a very good reason. But suppose something happened to you? then we'd be unable to find Rularu, which is our principal goal. I fail to understand your reluctance to trust us. You certainly can't believe that we would attempt to bamboozle you. Of course not, and I'm sorry if I gave that impression. Why, then, are you so unnaturally cautious? No. I'll be quite frank. You put matters on the basis of trust, but your demands for information make it quite clear that you do not trust me. This arouses in me a counter-distrust. You control a great deal of money which is rightfully mine, and this is leverage which you exert on me. I have information you want, and this is my leverage upon you. You are asking me to give up my leverage to put myself in your power without making a corresponding concession. What you say may be sensible on Earth, but out here, en route to Rlaru, what do you gain? Both Mr. Bickle and I are persons of honour. I can't imagine us, for the sake of argument, marooning you, or to be really melodramatic, causing your death. Stranger things have happened. When the time comes, I will take you to Rolaru. When the time comes, I hope that you in your turn will give me my money. Now, as to the matter of the planet I mentioned, I believe a visit to this planet would be highly rewarding. We would be forced to make a tedious detour. A slight detour, perhaps, but a very rewarding one. An old explorer described it to me. Ever since, I have wanted to visit this planet. You must do so on some other occasion. Our current itinerary is already established. We cannot jerk here and there about the galaxy to satisfy one person's whim. Kindly inform the astrogator that our immediate destination is Zaid, Second planet of Phi Orionis. Odd. Why in the name of all the lesser demons is Gondor so anxious to visit this particular world? It makes small difference, since we shall not be doing so. The rehearsal area is dimly lit. Maddock 
Roswin is sitting alone when Roger enters. I wish you'd tell me why you acted the way you did. Told those terrible stories about me. It seemed a good thing at the time. You must recognise, Roger, that I am fickle and perverse. Not at all the girl you thought I was. I can't escape the feeling that you were using me. But to what end, I can't imagine. Once I thought you were fond of me. If you were, if you still are, for heaven's sake tell me, and we'll clear up this terrible misunderstanding. I wish you'd tell me why you acted that way, as if I'd ever force you to do anything against your will. There's no misunderstanding, Roger. How can anyone so beautiful, so sensitive, so clever, be so faithless? I can't understand. It's not necessary that you understand, Roger. Roger leaves disconsolately. The ship, once again encapsulated in non-stuff like a worm in an oak gall, slides onward through space towards the star Phi Orionis and its planet, Zade. The opera cast join Maddock in the rehearsal area as they prepare for landing. <laughs>